Friday, bringing you in Sean Stanley Sports Talk here on SeanStanleySportsTalk.com. We're going to look at the Raw recap from last night. It's been a couple days, had some issues here at the house, but now everything all set up, ready to go. We're going to kick these back off. The Raw recap last night, of course, you know, Raw started with uh, Miz TV with John Morrison and the Miz in the ring. And, of course, the Raw competitors for Money in the Bank all came out. Riddle came out with his injured foot and, uh, by the way, selling that tremendously. A tremendous sell job. We'll get into more of that. He, he took on AJ Styles later on in the card. Uh, he climbs up to the top of the K up, uh, top of the cage, the top of the ladder. Almost, almost uh, knocks him off the ladder. Uh, AJ kicks at the foot. Ends up setting up the match for later on in the card. At the same time, we got Miz. I'm sorry, Morrison and Ricochet. They went back at it one more time. Again, another great match, by the way. Not taking anything away about it, from it. It was a tremendous match that they had there at the onset of Raw. And, and it set up for a good Raw. Honestly, it wasn't a terrible Raw. And, and to be honest, most of the Raws in ring, not bad at all. The in-ring performance is not bad at all. But now you're starting to see a little bit of, and again, I don't know if this is the fact that Hey, we're going back out on tour soon. We need to get this narrowed down or what, but you're starting to see more newer faces, right? Ali, Mansoor today, the, this week, you're still getting, but I feel like you're getting more in-depth writing. Things aren't just being drug out. You're seeing right now the Viking Raiders and AJ Styles and almost being set up. I believe they said that at the first live Raw, that's going to be a tag team title match that they're going to have as well. So again, good storylines starting to be written out. I believe a lot of this was just because in COVID, if you want to watch wrestling, you're going to watch wrestling. And, and I think some things probably got a little lazy. But when you're watching these last couple weeks of Raw, the shows, I mean, the wrestling hasn't been bad at all. So the wrestling to me in ring has never been the issue. The issue's always been the writing or the storylines that they kind of just threw together at the last minute. Things like that, that they're just trying to see, hey, let's see what sticks. The Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair, I almost feel like that's setting up for those two to team up. Uh, the little Star Wars angle that they ran this week with the crutches and they were fighting each other and you know, sometimes I think less is more. I think, they, they, you know, they want to use the crutches in there so bad that they just overused it to me. It's like after a while, you know, it's like, okay, she did it. Okay, you did it. Okay, now, listen, we're, we're getting it. You know, Charlotte Flair's, you know, Rhea's like, I'm in your head. And honestly, I think what it is is Charlotte's starting to pass on her knowledge, and I think you're going to end up seeing those two probably end up joining forces at some point. It's still, remember, Becky Lynch has got to come back, right? So at some point, does she come back to Raw? Does she come back to SmackDown? That's going to be the, the interesting part of this. Right now, though, in a way, it, it doesn't matter because up until September 7th, at least the, the dates that I've seen up to the Miami Raw, they're pretty much everybody's going to travel together. You're going to have SmackDown on Friday nights live in front of a crowd. Then you're going to have super shows on Saturday and Sunday. And then the Raw group will do their Raw live in front of the crowd Monday night. Now, will they add stuff? I don't know. As of right now, though, those are the dates. Usually when you look at the thing, it's mostly Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And, of course, you've got a pay-per-view uh, thrown in there as well now this only takes it up to september 7th i believe is what i saw and again i know they're releasing more and more dates as it goes but you could have your rolls and your smackdowns and so you know again do they bring becky back on the first live smackdown the first live raw you know there's gonna be some surprises you know there's got to be something surprising happen at some point, I'm not saying they gotta go overboard and make everything, hey, throw everything out, like throw the whole kitchen sink out on the first live raw, but you have to have that something that's like, oh, 
Got it. Okay. I see how this is going to go. You've got to have that aha moment, I believe, on that first live Raw, especially with the way Raw has been up and down on a roller coaster, right? It's It's been good shows, bad shows, good shows, bad shows. And again, to me, never the in-ring product, never the in-ring product at all on anything that is happening, Raw or SmackDown or NXT or AEW. I don't think a lot of it is the in-ring. It's a lot of uh, the getting to what the in-ring means, what it's the meaning of that match, what it's supposed to do. Looking at now you're seeing a couple new storylines being written on Raw. You have uh, Jinder Mahal and Drew McIntyre kind of going at it now. Jinder Mahal showed up on his bike that he got when he became WWE champion. He asked uh, McIntyre to supposed to go riding. He was too busy for him. So what happened? You know, they get in their match. Bam. What happened? They attack McIntyre, leave him laying, take his sword. Another new toy for Jinder Mahal. So you're starting to see new storylines become fresh. This is how you can keep McIntyre fresh. Because again, when you're challenging for the title for four months, ew, you get a little stale. You get a little stale. You saw him lose out, lose out. Now he gets in the money in the bank. He gets in the feud with Jinder Mahal, and now you can start bringing him up. You can start bringing him back up. And honestly, I think something was said last night on the Raw when Drew McIntyre made his way to the ring. What did he say? He said, when I get that money in the bank, I can cash on in any champion on any brand. It almost tells me that they're going to have him probably go to SmackDown. Because remember, he can't challenge Bobby Lashley on Raw. So you will probably end up seeing Drew McIntyre if he wins it. Again, maybe this is a little seed they plant. So you think, oh, here we go. McIntyre's going to win it. Go to SmackDown. Challenge Roman Reigns. You've seen Roman Reigns. He uh, in a something I read online somewhere said, you know, Drew McIntyre is one of the guys that he wouldn't mind, you know, passing the belt to so again now you're starting to see all this kind of intertwine and and things like that and, and you're seeing things roll out on tv not liking a lot about what they're doing with the women's division i thought the eight man or the eight woman tag if you want to call it that just did nothing for anybody you had almost a superhero nikki cross get pinned from a samoan drop you had uh, Alexa Bliss get hurt being pulled off the apron and slammed in a thing, even though she's got superpowers. You have Asuka, Naomi. I don't know what you're trying to do with that match. I don't get it. It just felt like, oh, we need to throw them on a card somewhere. Let's just uh, put all eight of them together and throw them in a tag, eight-man tag match. There were little storylines involved there. You know, Eva Marie and Dewdrop and Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, are they, are they trying to do something there? It was just very, to me, like, well, we got to we gotta find something for these eight women to do. Okay, well, uh, we've got 10 minutes. Let's put them in an eight-woman eight tag and, uh, and, and make it happen. That's what I felt happened with that match. The Riker, Elias, Cedric Alexander, R-Truth, I mean, that got the, the 24-7 title over more than it got, I think, Riker over. Honestly, I mean, I know Riker looked great with uh, beating Cedric Alexander in three or four minutes, and I feel terrible for Cedric Alexander. He deserves a lot better than what he's getting. I don't know what's happening behind stage, but the man is a true talent. And to go from where, you know, him and Shelton Milgerman war with the Hurt Business up in the main event level to now this and i don't even know what to call this but we'll have to see uh where it goes from here i don't know maybe they're building them down to build them back up you know they do that a lot they do that a lot they'll turn on baby face and the struggle the fight to get back to the top and everybody will jump on board possibly something you might see out of that something that I don't, again i don't understand a lot of times people get in dog houses there in WWE and uh takes a while to get out. Okay. Um 
some of the other matches trying to go off the top of my head here. You know, you had the main event, of course, New Day. They're they're keeping that storyline going. I like how New Day is taking on that mentality of do anything to win, right? They went after MVP's knee, chop blocks. They worked on the knee. Uh, they kept Lashley down. Um, I thought Lashley maybe sold a little too much for me. But again, you're trying to build it to where the belief is Kofi can beat him, right? At the pay-per-view, Kofi has a chance for Kofi mania. So once again, I guess this time it'd be, you know what, Kofi in the bank. I don't know what we're going to call this one. But that chance is there for him to upset and take the title from Bobby Lashley. Will that happen? Yeah, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if that happens. But last night they were victorious. Uh, they pinned MVP. You see the MVP at the end kind of look at Lashley be like, sorry, Lashley helped him up. Lashley, again, that whole thing where they're trying to say he lo- he's lost. He's lost that edge now that he's a champion. And I think you're going to bring the monster out of him at Money in the Bank. I think that is what's going to happen. You're going to get the monster out of him, and we'll see what happens. Uh, AJ Styles, again, I was talking about this match a little bit ago, just kind of, they, it was amazing. To me, it was one of the best match on the card. I thought Riddle, to me, has grown so much as a performer. Always been a great athlete. I mean, everybody knows about his MMA. Everybody knows about all that stuff. But as a performer to me, he's growing more and more in the ring. Yes, he's got the comedy aspect down to a T. Everybody knows that. But now you're watching him grow this foot injury. He sold that so well. The storyline of that whole match, almost even tripping him up. And then at the end, I, I wasn't upset about the, the Samoa's ending because, again, it wasn't the fact that it wasn't overdone, right? The Viking Raiders pop up. They kind of corner almost. AJ gets distracted because Eric jumps up on the one far side and he's trying to point to him. He backs up a couple steps, rolls him up quick, one, two, three, and he's out. I'm okay with that. I don't want to see, you know, 50,000 moves and, you know, and, and other things and moves off the top rope and you're kicking out and then you get pinned by a chair shot. That, I don't, it just takes away to me. Especially when a match was so great to have that ending. But we'll dive into that when we get back to the other side. But again, sometimes less is more, right? AJ Styles was about to hit the Styles Clash. He gets distracted because almost, and the Viking Raiders start rising up from the back. Get distracted, roll them up, one, two, three. And again, you're, you're keeping Riddle that, that fresh. Everybody's for him. When you look at it, you're looking at money in the bank right now, right? He's one of the top. You got to look at what, what the push he's getting right now. He's got to be one of the favorites. Where's Randy Orton been the last two weeks? We don't know about that either. A lot of things, you know, happening on Raw. Some good, some bad, some indifferent. The in-ring work has been tremendous. To me, the writing is getting better. The storylines are better. And hopefully this continues. We got one more week at Thunderdome, which I made a mistake yesterday on Twitter. I jumped the week ahead. I was hoping. Because when they started that first that first segment to me was was just felt like okay we got to waste fifteen minutes okay let's throw five guys out there and have them just talk that's what I felt like that was about I mean I get it. I get that they're pushing the money in the bank match and the raw competitors and this and that if I have to hear one more Drew McIntyre history lesson or whatever he does whatever. It was cool, you know, that thing. I get it, what he's trying, what they're trying to do with them and give them that little bit of an edge, but, man, I've had enough of it. I really have. I mean, either figure it out what you want them to do or just stop with the history stuff. Just stop. Are you going to do that in the when you go back to the live action? 
when you go back to the live crowds, are you going to be able to get away with that? Because honestly, if that was out there for the first 15 minutes, you probably lost some of that crowd. It's going to be interesting to see how they start the roles now that they're going back to the live crowds. Because remember, before it used to always start with the interview to get the crowd going for the main event match. Then it settled down for a little bit to where they started with the action because the crowds started getting tired of that. But it will be interesting. We'll find out, I guess, what, in uh, next Friday, SmackDown will go to a live audience. Then, of course, the pay-per-view on Sunday and Raw on Monday. AEW this Wednesday goes live. We're going to see if, if anything changes. Just a Raw recap. We're going to have another show later on tonight discussing some news that has been breaking. Until then, I'll talk to you then.